I'm Desiree. And I'm Jordan. We just bought our dream blue water sailboat called Atticus 2, and we're working hard to transform her from a weekend cruiser into a long distance offshore voyager. For the last couple of weeks, we've been addressing some unexpected maintenance issues. Last week, we removed our transmission to troubleshoot problems we've been having shifting in and out of gear and can't wait until we can make Atticus 2 mobile again. a while since I've driven a truck. <laughs> so today we are going on a road trip. Heading to New Jersey to take the transmission to East Coast Transmissions. So, it, and we called around a lot and they seem to be the absolute best. Transmissions are just so complicated that we want to have someone that is an expert at transmissions taking this thing apart. Hopefully I'm not gonna get a lot of traffic. I gotta go like past New York, so that's gonna be fun. Also wanted to give a huge shout out to Jeff and Linda Dow, who are the people that lent us this truck. Thank you so much, you guys are awesome. I'm gonna try really hard not to run into anything. So once Rick from East Coast Transmissions got the thing on his bench, he started to play around with the shifter. Oh. And somehow he instantly got the thing to work. I felt like a total moron, especially after Rick shot me that look that just said, you literally drove here three hours. I'm not a smart man. But I must say Rick was super gracious and along with not once mentioning how much of an idiot I am, he also put the transmission through a few tests just to make sure it was in good condition. You know, I can't simulate whether it would push a boat or not, but it's certainly not slipping. You know, that fluid is really, really good and it's unlikely that you have any clutch issue with fluid that clean. So if I had just rebuilt this, I would be, you know, I would be good to go with this. Yeah, you'd be happy with it. All right, so after talking to Rick, I think I have a good sense of what happened here. So you may remember that I was trying to calibrate the cable so that when the throttle lever was in neutral and when this lever was in neutral, that the cable matched right up with the hole here. One of the things that I did to try to get it to be in exactly the right position is I loosened this bolt right here. And this bolt is what compresses the lever onto the shifting shaft. I loosened this to be able to adjust its position when the shaft is in neutral. It appears that when I went to go back and tighten this bolt, I didn't quite tighten it enough. And so to demonstrate what happened, I'm gonna make a mark on both the shifting shaft and on the lever. If I shift this into reverse, you can see that the shaft followed the lever. Well, if I loosen this bolt just a little bit, then what can happen is there's so much resistance to get the lever and the shifting shaft back into neutral that if this isn't tight enough, the lever can slip on the shaft. And now I pretend to go back into neutral. Well, now it's free to move and that's the problem that I felt and experienced. Now it's important to note that there's a lot less resistance when shifting from neutral into gear than there is when shifting from in gear into neutral. And so what that means is that even though that bolt was a little bit loose, it still had enough grab to push from neutral into gear, but yet not enough to grab when going from gear into neutral. So anyway, that's what happened. And I feel really embarrassed and stupid because it's pretty much all my fault. Okay, we're all set down here. Let's see if I can do this without like destroying my back. Do some warm ups. You think that's funny? Yeah. You wanna get down in here and do this? <laughs> this thing's heavy, man. <sighs> oh, okay. oh, shit. Okay, I need to bring it back up. <laughs> you get my hat? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see if I can. No. <sighs> 
How the hell did Chris do this? I don't know. But you're doing a really good job, buddy. Thank you. You're making it look super effortless. Can you actually grab this for me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Got it? Oh my gosh, okay. Attempt number one failed. <laughs> what happened, I didn't realize it, the shaft flange is too far forward, so I can't actually get these two flanges like in place. I gotta just push that shaft further aft. You ever like, when you're a kid, get into a real small space, like under a couch or something, and you got stuck and you couldn't get out? You know ever happened to you, bud? No, never happened to you? <laughs> All right, well it happened to me. That's how that felt. Here we go. Okay, yeah, I'm in a much better position. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, it's in place. So, I mean, I gotta put all the bolts in, but it's, it's in place. All right, so now that the transmission is back and installed, it's worth talking about the fact that we still don't know what the problem has been with our ability to shift in and out of gear. Now, you may remember that at the very beginning of this whole process, that we thought that the cable was most likely simply out of calibration, which was true. We did calibrate the cable to the lever on the transmission, and that made for a big improvement. And in doing so, we found that there was a lot of chafing and corrosion going on with that transmission cable. So we ended up just replacing the cable altogether and that helped the problem out a lot too. But before we removed the transmission, I still wasn't quite happy with how easily I was able to shift in and out of gear at the helm station. So now that we know the problem is not with the transmission itself, I'm thinking that it's most likely that the control unit at the helm station is probably worn and needs to be replaced. So I picked up a new one and let's see if that fixes the problem. Okay, so let's give it a try and see how it works. Yeah, I mean, it, it works pretty darn well. I'm pretty happy with it. I can feel though, like it's not like the perfect beautiful fluid feeling I was hoping for. Now I think ultimately the reason that we've been having this issue is not because of one large problem, but because of multiple small problems. And I think there are still a few aspects of the system that could be better. The housing itself is just too small, kind of poorly designed for this control unit. Maybe someday in the future we'll consider replacing this pedestal with a newer model. For now, I think we're good to go. All right, so now it's on to a project that is probably gonna be fairly simple, but I just hate doing, and it's gonna be fixing the toilet. Seems like I end up taking apart a marine toilet at least once or twice a year. It's an electronic flush. When I hit the button, you can hear the motor try to engage, but not be able to turn the pump. I basically just have to take this apart and see if there's just something in there that's obstructing the pump from being able to turn. Time to get poop on my hands, let's do this. So I decided not to fully remove the pump because it's really hard to get all of the hoses off and then back on again. But I kind of paid the price for that because by far the toughest part of this job was doing it hunched over in the corner with bad access. Oh yeah. Ugh, I hate doing this stuff. I'm just covered in pee. <laughs> I feel so freaking gross. What in the f is that? I know what this is. The toilet seat that hinges up and down, it has four plastic spacers that actually rest on the rim of the bowl. When we first bought the boat, I noticed that one of them was missing. And that's what this is. You can see the blades of the macerator just kind of chewed it up, chewed it up, until finally it got caught and then the blades dug in. And that's what froze and locked up the, the macerator pump. All right, let's go turn the breaker on and see if this thing's working. Yes! Oh. Oh gosh, I'm glad that project is over. Now it's time to take a shower 
and just clean this place up because it is gross. Well, today is a big day and I'm very nervous. <laughs> I woke up this morning, I was feeling kind of nauseous because we've been planning on practicing docking and I just woke up and I was like, ugh. This boat, it's got 10 more feet to it. So as I'm maneuvering around, it's like maneuvering Atticus One with an additional 10 foot bowsprit. We're both really nervous and we need to. <laughs> Another element that makes today really kind of nerve wracking is that everything is new to us, all these systems. You know, we took out the transmission, reinstalled the transmission. I signed up for CTO. Uh, about a month ago and uh, got them on speed dial just in case. I'm not entirely sure what that was about. <laughs> <laughs> the nav instruments are reading a low voltage, but the batteries seem to have over 12. So another thing we got to figure out, long story short, like I, I just want to not be afraid of moving the boat. It'll be a while before we get really good at it but I want to get rid of like the fear. Ugh, okay, let's just do it. There's just no, I can't talk my way out of it. So you can see here that the moment that we took the lines off the dock, that the wind was pushing us to the starboard or away from the dock. Now, once I engage the engine in reverse, you can see that the prop walks to port. So basically you can see that the stern sucked over to port, even though the wind is pushing us to starboard. That's why we had to kind of fend off this piling. Now, ideally in this situation, we actually want the stern to go to starboard and we want the bow to go to port so we can exit the marina. Unfortunately, we had the worst of both worlds here. The wind was pushing the bow to starboard and the prop walk was pulling our stern to port. Now you can see, although the boat is pretty hard to maneuver in reverse, the moment we went into forward, the boat started to turn pretty quick. Now this is actually a great angle for you to see my view from the helm station and just how hard it is to tell how far away the bow is from the objects in front of us and whether or not we're gonna hit anything. So my first mistake here was not going forward and continuing the turn long enough. I shouldn't have gone in reverse so soon and you can see once I did, our bow immediately started to fall off and we lost most of the ground that we gained during that turn. You're looking good but you might want to give it to it more. Clearing the piling, but the boat kind of headed for it. Okay. Now, although Desiree said we might hit the boat in front of us, in hindsight, it looks like we probably would have made it. So effectively, we made that same mistake twice. We just should have continued with the turn. Oh, this is stressful. <laughs> now with the third attempt, you can see I really gave it to her when we first started going in forward. And I think that helped a lot in making the boat turn even quicker from the very beginning, which is something I'll have to remember in the future. I think we're gonna make it this time. Oh, my heart is just racing. <sighs> well, that was definitely different. <laughs> oh, feels good to be moving though, huh? Feels good to have that part over with. I know. I typically like to approach a dock at about a 45 degree angle. But here you can see there is a significant amount of current pushing us to starboard. So I did my best to compensate. Now this is how prop walk can really work in your favor. Once I went into reverse to kill my speed, the prop walk sucked the stern right over to the dock. Nice work, Captain, except for the fenders. Oh, you didn't put the fenders over. Although nice work blaming the crew, Captain. That's a real classy move. That went well, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was happy about that. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad because all the old tricks that worked on Atticus work on this boat. So after I did a few more touch and goes, it was time for Desiree to get behind the wheel. Okay, give it to her a lot. And she totally nailed it. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. After a couple of hours of practicing, we both felt pretty comfortable, but we wanted to try one more docking at a spot that we hadn't been to yet. I was surprised to see we were drifting to starboard so much. Being on the other side of the river from our previous docks, I had imagined that whereas before we drifted to starboard, this time we would drift to port. But to be honest, I just didn't think much of it. A little more straight, a little straighter. 
Okay, reverse. Turn more, right. Right, reverse, park. This time we weren't even close to a good dock. I assumed that Desiree must have just done something wrong and that it was time for the captain to take over and show her how it's done. Feeling very confident and manly, I made my final turn, put the engine in reverse, but the stern refused to walk to port. No matter, I thought, I'll just try again. And once again, the stern wouldn't budge to port and even began to drift to starboard. And to make matters worse, the bow began to quickly drift toward the dock. Bend it, please. Ah, yes, way to command your crew to save the boat from damage just in the nick of time. Great leadership, Captain. What I forgot is that the tides change roughly every six hours. So although the tide was coming in when we began, the tide was now outgoing, which managed to push our stern away from the dock while the wind pushed our bow into the dock. So the key takeaways from this experience. Lesson one, quit being an a-hole. Lesson two, be aware that tidal currents can change throughout the day and adjust my planning accordingly. Finally, it was time to bring the boat back to our slip, which just so happened to be the trickiest docking situation of the day. To dock at our slip, I'd need to begin the turn toward the slip at exactly the right moment too soon and I'd be approaching our dock at a bad angle and the wind would blow us away from it. Too late and I'd run into the outside piling. After the turn, I'd need to approach the dock at just the right angle to get close enough to walk the stern over against the wind and get our lines on before getting blown away from the dock and into the adjacent slip. But never fear, the captain is here. Okay, keep an eye on the bow with this piling. Watching this after the fact, it's painfully obvious that I made my turn a bit too early. But instead of slowing the rate of my turn, which could have saved the maneuver, I continued to turn hard, afraid of hitting that outside piling. So now when I hit reverse to stop my forward motion, the stern walked to port even though I was already way too close to the dock. That was good. <laughs> Glad you think so. But to save face, I was able to calmly step onto the dock with stern line in hand, completely forgetting of the need for a spring line to stop our forward motion. Edward, are you in forward right now? Great job, Captain. How was that, bud? <laughs> oh my gosh. There were some successes today and I was beginning to think like, this whole boating thing is really fun and not as stressful as I always think it is. <laughs> And then the wind picked up and I messed up the docking. And I messed getting, up the docking. Yeah, then you messed up the docking. Luckily, there was someone walking by. He just started pushing Atticus 2 off the dock. Yeah, did we hit the dock at all? No, but if Jim weren't there, we definitely would have nailed it. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> very welcome. Welcome to be here. <laughs> you guys communicate very well with each other when coming in. Oh, coming thanks. in hot, a little more starboard. Oh, nice. Cool. Good job, guys. Well, we, got, we did something right. That's yeah. good. <laughs> welcome. The biggest thing for me really was just how big it is. So, for instance, coming in, like we didn't have any spring lines rigged because on Atticus 1, Desiree throws on a bow line, I throw on a stern line and we're good. Yeah. But this boat's longer than the finger pier is. Uh -huh. So the stern line doesn't keep you from moving forward, you know? <laughs> I definitely didn't eliminate the fear, <laughs> but I mean, I think it was a good day. We didn't hit anything. We learned a lot. Yeah. And we're, I'm less afraid of the boat. That's life, right, buddy? That's, that's life. If you're not almost running into docks, you ain't living. <laughs> if, you, if you're not afraid, you aren't alive. <laughs> oh, God.